Hey guys, it's Archon, and I just want to make this quick guide for you guys on the Sleet Storm build for the Wizard. Now, the Sleet Storm build isn't anything new. People have been trying it out for a while. It's very similar to the Critical Mass build, except you're using Sleet Storm instead of Energy Twister. There's a few other alterations, but that's the big one. But recently, we've been doing some testing on my live stream, and we found out that the Sleet Storm build can actually be just as efficient as the Critical Mass build if you gear for it. Uh, now, you might be asking, why would you use the Sleet Storm build? if the critical mass build is just as efficient. Well, I'll tell you why, imaginary person. There are a few subtle differences between the two builds. The Sleet Storm build does start doing damage quicker. It does almost maximum damage right away, where the critical mass build kind of ramps up its damage. The Sleet Storm build is going to rely on lifesteal instead of life on hit, so you get your life back a little bit faster. Now, the critical mass build has its advantages too. It probably does more damage in longer fights, although less damage in shorter fights, and your cooldowns do drop faster on the critical mass build. You're getting more procs in the crit mass build, but Sleet Storm is just a nice change of pace, and there is one other reason why you might want to try it out. I think there's a good chance they're going to get rid of the critical mass build in Reaper of Souls. There's no actual information on that. I just think there's a good chance that they're going to remove the critical mass passive and probably arcane power on crit. Those are just two things that seem like they're easily exploitable. I assume that arcane power regeneration will probably replace arcane power on crit, as we've seen that in Paragon 2.0 you can put points into arcane power regeneration, so it seems like that's going to be a new stat. And the Sleet Storm build does not rely on a fast attack speed, so if you wanted to, you could go with just a very slow attack speed. You wouldn't need the APOC, and you could get enough regeneration to keep casting Sleet Storm. But in this guide, I'm going to use a little bit of APOC, and we're also going to use the Critical Mass passive, because why not? It works. It's a better way to do it now. You just don't need it, because you're not relying on stun-locking enemies to stay alive when you have that lifesteal. The gear you need is actually very similar to the gear you would need for the Archon build, so if you're already doing Archon, you might be able to keep the same set of gear. The one thing I would change out is the helm. It's nice to have some arcane power on crit, so I'd get a storm crow. But other than that, you can keep the same set of gear, which is nice because you need completely different gear for the CM set. So you can't do Archon and CM without having two different completely sets of gear. Um, but if you want to skip the gear guide section of this, if you want to skip the auction house section, you can just hit this button below and just watch the actual Sleet Storm build itself. But let's move on. Let's go to the auction house. I'm going to show you how I would build a Sleet Storm set. It's going to be a lot like uh, a critical mass set, except for we're going to have a slower attack speed and we're going to go lifesteal instead of life on hit. We're also not going to need quite as much APOC as we would need on a critical mass set. So we'll start with the weapon. Uh, you could go Scorn if you want to. That's going to be the slowest attack speed. And uh, if you didn't have APOC, that's kind of how you have to go. But we're going to get a little APOC on the Stormcrow. So I think we're going to go a one-handed weapon because you can usually get a little bit more damage, especially on Wizards. Uh, int weapons are just usually really cheap. So on the weapon, we want Int, we want Lifesteal, and we want a socket. And we might look at uh, crit damage as well. Now I'm going to go through the set pretty quickly um, because I don't want it to be a very long video. If I was going to build this set myself, I would make it um, much much, I would take much more time on the auction house to find better deals. Um, where you have 560 million gold, I want to make a 50 million budget guide. So I'm going to take about 20% of my budget, which is 10 million gold, and put it into the weapon. Uh, since we also have to buy a socket, I'm just going to put 8 million gold here. A gem, rather. Uh, for the socket, I should say. So we'll sort by uh, DPS here. I'm just going to scroll through here um, and see what kind of damage we can get. Here we're losing 78,000. I have a pretty nice weapon we're comparing it to. And of course, there's an empty socket. And there's 75,000. Um, here we go. Now, of course, we would rather have a slower weapon here, but I'm mostly going to go with what gives us the best damage. Uh, this is a sword. has some good int on there. Let's compare this to ones with crit damage as well. Sometimes you can get a better deal adding it, sometimes not. You do lose a lot of um, weapon damage. So you have some nice butcher sickles here. But we're not getting quite down to uh, only losing 75,000 damage, so I think we're better off without it. We could look at crit damage instead of having a socket, and um, that's going to be hard to compare to because we already have a gem in our weapon. But we can see the most damage we can get is this one, um, 11... 56. It is a faster weapon because it's an Echoing Fury. Um, and let's see what the highest damage we could get with a socket was, and that'll tell us a little bit about which one's better. We get 1114. Uh, now the socket, we're probably not gonna be able to get a great socket. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and grab that Echoing Fury with crit damage. Normally I would take the socket, but since we're on a 50 mil budget, we're not gonna be able to get a nice gem. And uh, this, this seems like a nice deal for 5 mil. 
Let's see, none of these other ones have quite as low of a damage loss. So we're just going to grab that. And when I build sets on my stream, I take much longer to buy items. Of course, the longer you take, the, uh, the better deals you can get. We're going to get a triumvirate in the offhand. This just seems like the best way to get a lot of damage. Uh, we'll put 5 mil on the budget here. Now, if you had a bigger budget, you might want to get APOC on the triumvirate. Um, Arcane Power on Crit, that is. But we have a lower budget here, so we're just going to get one piece of Arcane Power on Crit, and that's on the Stormcrow. And it seems like that's enough. Uh, it's going to be a little low for single target damage, uh, but for groups, one piece of APOC is going to be fine for this, as we are going to have a slower attack speed. And we're just going to see where we lose the least amount of damage. There's 6,900. Uh, there we get some health. Let's see. We'll just go ahead and take that one for 5 mil, I think. Let's see. If we can get something close that's uh, significantly cheaper, we would take that. But no. Ah, there's 72. Ah, it's still 5 million. Okay, we'll splurge a little bit here. Actually, let's take this. 89 for 1 million. Again, not spending a lot of time. I just want to show you guys basically how I would build a set. But the more time you spend looking through gear, you know, different stats and stuff, the better deals you're going to find. So Stormcrow, we'll put uh, 5 million on that. We want crit chance on our Stormcrow. We don't care too much about the life on hit on the Stormcrow because we're mostly relying on the lifesteal from the weapon. Uh, so we'd rather just have some good crit chance. And it'd be nice if we get 8% lightning damage. And there's a nice one for 3.8. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that. only has 9 APOC, but I think that will be enough. We're going to go 3 piece Zunis. Uh, I think you want about as much defense on this set as you would on a CM set. You are going to be getting hit a little bit more because you're not always stun locking. Uh, however, we'll probably use Pinpoint bar Barrier instead of Storm Armor, so we'll have a little bit more defense from that. And the lifesteal helps a little bit more than life on hit. Uh, so Zunis Maro. We want good int and good vit on here. And you might want to try to get some armor, but it's usually a little overpriced. Let's go like 215 vit and uh, 145 int. Let's see if we can do that. That's going to be a little too much. I'm used to building higher end sets. Let's see. Um, well, that's all we can get with those stats. That is 170 int, though. Let's just go ahead and take it. Normally, I'd look longer, but we know that's a good deal, so we'll just we'll go ahead and grab it. We are a little over budget right now in how much we've been spending, so let me just lower this to 4 mil to make sure we don't spend all of our money too fast. On the Zuni's Trails, I'd love to get some all res, so let's see if we can. Um, I'll put 40 all res. I shouldn't have gotten rid of that int and vit there. We need those as well. Uh, vit, we'll say 60, and int, I'll say, uh, we'll just keep it low for now, 125. Okay, we can get more than that. We can actually get 183 int on this piece right here. 49 all res. So I usually just add the damage and life together. I feel like one point of damage is about the same as one point of life in most cases. Um, let's see if there's any with really high all res. Let's see, what do you have? I have some good damage with that all res for 3 mil. We're getting about 20 more all res, is that right? Um, we're losing about 40 stat points, 50 stat points, I guess, to get 20 all res. And 1%. You know what? Let's go ahead. Ooh, this is only 2 mil, though. Yeah, I think that other, one's, uh, that other one's a little bit better, but this one's a little bit cheaper. So we'll just grab this one. Get a little bit more damage. Miss out on the defense. Um, for the pants, we can go uh, Depth Diggers. You could go in his pants. That's going to give you the most damage, probably. But um, but in his pants are going to give you attack speed. And attack speed means you're going to sp spending your arcane power on crit. Or your arcane power faster. So let's just go pants here. Keep it at 4 mil. Um, sometimes you can get good deals without sockets. I think most people usually go sockets, but on a lower budget, I usually find my better deals uh, without the sockets. So let's go ahead. I'm not gonna do too much time, spend too much time searching here. We'll just see what we can get without the sockets. Um, let's see, we get one socket there. There's a little bit of damage, but we can make up with that for that with a gem. So let's go ahead and take that for two mil. Okay, let's go ahead and get the Zuni's Pox on here. Uh, usually crit chance is going to be better for the higher end sets. Uh, it's hard to tell for the lower end sets, but just to save us some time, we'll just go crit chance. If I was uh, spending more time, I'd probably go through all the different options. We're not going to go crit chance because you can't get that for 4 mil. Uh, let's just take a gander at what the cheapest we can get crit chance for is. We can get it for 6 mil. 6.5, we can actually get 3.5 crit chance. Okay, now we lose 20,000 damage. Now, the set I'm wearing right now is a high-end set, so it's going to show up as a... 
crit chance is going to help a lot more than it would on a low end set uh, compared to int and average damage and that kind of stuff. Average damage is also going to help more because we have a high attack speed on this set, but not on the set we're building. Um, but we'll just take a look at some like high end with average damage zuni poxes, see if there's anything that compares. And there, oh sorry, I, I forgot to keep our buyout in there. We'll put it at uh, 6.5 mil since that was uh, the highest one we had before. And there's 18,000, 19,000. All right, it's not too bad, not too shabby here. Just go ahead and grab one of these uh, cheap ones here. This one's not too bad. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than the other one, so we'll grab that. I think that'll be good. There we go, some average damage and int. Okay, let's see. Let's go ahead and get the belt next. Go ahead and get a witching hour here. Witching hour does have attack speed, but it's just kind of the way to go. As far as belts go, there's nothing that really compares right now. Hopefully that kind of stuff changes in Reaper of Souls. Uh, but we'll put 140 int on here. We might get some armor. Armor used to be practically free on Witching Hours, but um, but things have changed. People pay for armor now. People probably overpay for armor, in my opinion. No, but you got to get at least a little bit of it. Uh, crit damage, maybe we'll keep this low, just so we can get a little bit more of everything else. Uh, we haven't gotten a lot of VIT yet, so let's get some VIT on here. And uh, I think I'll keep armor off. Actually, yeah, we can. As we can see, um, it'd be hard to get one with armor anyway. So those are, those are Tasker and Theos, not how much now. Uh, there we get more life, but we lose too much damage. The damage difference from crit damage is going to be more dramatic here because we're wearing a high end set. Um, these are all about the same. So let me get try to get something a little bit cheaper. Not too bad. I, I don't care about the nine attack speed so much. Some forty nine hundred life. That's probably the best one here, but it's not a huge difference. So let's go ahead and get the cheap one. Got witching hour. We're gonna be a little low on vit so far. We we want to make sure we're getting a lot of that. Uh, we could go lacunies here. And that would also give us our movement speed. Um, now we can do this with uh, for 12% movement speed. I think on a lower budget set, I'm going to do that just so we can get our defense here. On a higher budget, I would probably get Lacunis to get that movement speed, and then um, and then we can get also some extra defense. Uh, but let's just go four mil, so we make sure we're not overspending here on the bracers. We want int vit. All res and crit chance. We could get some armor, be nice, but might be asking too much. We'll keep the crit chance low to make sure we can get what we need of everything else. We'll put 55 all res. Um, we'll keep the int and vit kind of low as well. They give us too many pages, so let's see. We can get 164 int vit. We can get 174. Let me just pump this vit up a bit because that's what we need the most right now. And then we'll look at the higher int rolls. Again, we're just adding life and damage together, seeing what we can get so far. That first one's our best deal. It gives us just, um, oh, actually, I guess we had one that was a better deal. Where was it? They're pretty similar. Yeah, that's the best deal for the price. It's about 11,000 loss. Um, this one's really nice here. Get a big vit roll there and six crit. So that's probably going to be the way to go. We keep looking for a better deal, but it's good enough, so we'll take it. Again, just for the sake of the video. Let's get another ring. As you can see, we're not getting much attack speed at all here. Attack speed is mostly bad for uh, for this build uh, because it's going to cause us to go through our arcane power a little bit faster. I keep Xing out stats I need here. All right, so on the ring, we want int. We want crit chance and crit damage and probably some average damage. Let's see, and we'll take this up to mm, 6 mil, just in case we find a good deal. I wouldn't want to spend that much, but we would if we had to. Let's go 4.5 crit, um, we'll say 26 crit damage, 34 average damage. We'll sort by int. Let's see, there we lose 6,200 damage. 5,800 for 1 mil, not bad at all. Yeah, let's just do that and save some money. That one looks like it's going to be good. Chances are we'd find a better deal if we kept going, but but we know that one's a good deal. Um, so 
We'll keep it short and sweet. Let me go ahead and grab my... I'm um, no, sorry, we already got our stormcrow. Let me go ahead and grab uh, the gloves next. And we have 19 mil left. We have gloves to buy, shoulders, the amulet, and then the gems. Um, so we're looking pretty good. I like to save a lot of the budget for the for the amulet uh, and the gloves and ring. But it looks like we're getting close there. Let's go ahead. We'll put the gloves on. We're going to have to get some vits somewhere because uh, we're still a little low. Uh, now, gloves, I still usually get crit chance um, because, I'm sorry, attack speed on the gloves because we can get a lot more damage. But this time, I think we're going to refrain so that we can get some of our more defensive stats that we're missing out on here. So we'll just go a higher crit chance, crit damage, and um, an int, and we'll put some vit on there as well because we're going to be low on health as it is. So 125 int, 65 vit. Uh, we don't get a huge amount of results, but let's see, we only lose 9,000. It's a little bit nicer. Sorry, I guess the first one was about 10,000. See, that one's about the same, but it's cheaper. The armor's about the same as well. Let's see. And this one's about the same, but it's more expensive. We'll go ahead and get the four mil ones. There's some life. We're going to lose a bit of damage, but that's all right. And then uh, shoulders. Let's go vile wards. And I might actually go for a big vit roll here. Um, just to try to make up for, for what we've lost so far. So let's just see how much of it we can get. 146. A little bit of strength on there not, uh, as well, which is nice. That for 3 mil. Not mind that. We do lose a bit more damage there, but it's not going to be as dramatic on the set we're building. Let's take that. It's a good deal. Now we have 12 mil left for the amulet. We'd like to save a little bit for the gem, so I'll go ahead and put 10 mil here. We're mostly just trying to get damage on the amulet. You can get so much amulet, you can get so much damage from an amulet that I like to to try to just get damage. And normally I look at uh, average damage on here too, just to compare. But I think we're gonna refrain as uh, average damage isn't gonna be as helpful with our slower attack speed. So uh, wow, I can't get quite as much as I had hoped for a lot of damage there actually get some average damage um 3700 wow that's a good enough deal for me let's go ahead and take it we're actually a little under budget here we might be under defensed as well but um we have four sockets i believe to buy gems for let's go ahead and buy those basically you want about the same defense you'd get on a cm set um, maybe a smidge more, but really the pinpoint barrier and the lifesteal should make up for that. Um, perfect star is way too much. I think maybe we can afford a star. Yeah. Okay, let's get four of those. Hopefully all of our items actually came through, so we can try this on right now. If not, I'll just have to pause the video, but um, I think they're all here. Let's see, there's the Echoing Fury. Cool. And I already cleared out of space in my stash, and I have um, another wizard that's set up with the Sleet Storm build already. Paragon leveling a second wizard, so I have a, my old wizard is just naked right now. All right, so let me grab Naked Archon, put on this gear, and I'll show you kind of how the build works. I'll try it out on MP10 just to kind of stress test it, but with a 50 mil budget, MP10 is going to be a little high. Um, it's really good at killing large groups of white mobs because it starts doing its damage right away. Um, white, white mobs is really what it's best against. Um, it does all right against elite packs, but critical mass sets definitely going to do better. Now, of course, if you were in Reaper of Souls, you wouldn't have the APOC, so you would need a lot of skills that give you back the arcane power. Um, and, of course, you'd have a slower attack speed. Probably, you'd probably still get the Witching Hour, but of course in Reaper Souls, itemization is going to be completely different, so I can't even uh, tell you what you'd get. But um, but it might be a good set to have when Reaper Souls comes out, just a level from 60 to 70. And uh, so here you can see our skills here. We are using Astral Presence um, to get some Arcane Power back, but other than that, not much. Um, I tried it out without APOC, and you can do fine if you use uh, Diamond Skin with Prism, and uh, then the the familiar rune and the magic weapon rune that give you arcane power back and you can even use power of the storm on storm hour if you want to um, and you can really reduce the cost of, of sleet storm and get 
and get a lot of arcane power back, and you don't need that APOC, which is nice. Um, but then you probably wouldn't want Frost Nova on here. Uh, there might be a legendary that removes the cooldown of Explosive Blast, which would be perfect for a build like this, because you're always getting arcane power back, or at least you're not spending much of it. Um, but other than that, at least for right now, before Reaper Souls comes out, while well, we still have APOC and Critical Mass, it's very similar to the Critical Mass build. You're just going to switch out Energy Twister with Sleet Storm, and then the rest is really optional. I have Deep Freeze on there, because just for the crit chance, it's nice. Uh, Pinpoint Barrier for the defense, because uh, normally I'd use Shocking Aspect for CM, but it's not going to be as good when we have a slower attack speed and less ticks. Um, wormhole, that's optional. And then Diamond Skin with Prism is nice if you're running out of Arcane Power, but you could use Crystal Shell instead. You could use Diamond Shards as well, but it's not going to proc as much as it would on Critical Mass. So there's that build there. Let's look at our stats. I should mention some people use Frostburn Gauntlets here. Uh, they work fine. You can you can try that out as well, uh, especially on a lower budget. That could be nice sometimes. I just kind of wanted to show you what the stats would look like. And um, and some people would also use a, an SOJ just to kill those elite packs faster. Uh, so when we put on Pinpoint Barrier, we're up to 4,300 armor, which is nice. We're a little low other than that because we couldn't really afford to get armor. It's pretty pricey right now, but we make up for it on all res. We have over 700 on all of our all res, and our health is at 44,000. That is at 100 Paragon, so it's a little low on health, uh, but we did what we can. We could do a little bit better if we spent more time on the Auction House, of course. Um, with Pinpoint Barrier and Scoundrel, up to 55 crit chance, which is nice. Uh, our damage is at 179 with Pinpoint bar Barrier. Which, um, again, is a little low, um, but it's actually about where you'd be with the critical mass build. Um, I know you could do better than that if you spent more time in the auction house, but we've been testing that, this out a lot on my stream, and the damage always ends up to be about the same or a little bit higher than the critical mass build. I say higher because we don't have to worry about getting that attack speed and the life on hit, which can usually diminish the amount of stats you can get. Uh, you can see our movement speed is a little bit slower. But you're going to play the build uh, very similar to the critical mass build. Sorry about the lag, I just got into this game. Um, but... You're just holding down Sleet Storm, uh, the way you normally hold down Energy Twister, and then you're just going to tap the other buttons. And you can see on MP10, even with a uh, low budget set, it cuts through these mobs pretty quickly. Let's grab this ring. And you can still stun lock white mobs all right. Um, just, it's just uh, mostly elite packs that you can't stun lock. Took that charge just fine. But as you can see, unlike the critical mass build where the damage has to ramp up, we start doing our damage right away. And again, sorry about the lag, guys. Uh, also, if you watch my health um, when it drops, it comes back up much quicker. Uh, Arcane power is not going down at all, at least in these groups. Um, but also, also, our cooldowns are not dropping as fast as they would in critical mass. So for now, it's just a nice change of pace. If you're uh, getting sick of the critical mass build, you want to try something else out, or you just can't get the gear for the critical mass build because you don't have the attack speed. Um, if you wanted something to do with your Archon gear, it would be pretty easy to transition from Archon to Sleet Storm, whereas transitioning from Archon to Critical Mass would be pretty challenging. Um, it's just a fun build to play, out, play around with. A lot of people on my channel have been testing it out. And um, yeah, I think there's a good chance that Critical Mass isn't going to be working once Reaper of Souls comes out. But you can see. Um, it also does well on lower MPs. Right now we're just kind of stress testing it on MP10 to make sure it could hang. But uh, Critical Mass usually has a hard time on lower MPs, mostly because it takes a while before you start doing damage. So even on MP2 or 3, it takes you a few seconds before you start killing white mobs. Um, but Sleet Storm starts doing max damage immediately, and, um, and therefore it, it works really well on lower MPs as well. Um, and there we finally got charged and killed um, as a 50 mil budget set. You're probably going to die a bit on MP10, so you're probably better off on like MP8 or so. Uh, especially, we didn't get to an elite pack, but elite packs are going to be pretty challenging as well with this set. Um, but on a higher budget, um, we had like 800 all res and 5,000 armor with pinpoint and 55,000 health, and we were doing MP10 like it was nothing. I mean, way tankier than on CM, and we still got some good damage. Uh, that was, I think, in a, in a, with a one bill budget, and we had 225,000 damage. So, um, yeah, it's a fun set. Definitely try it out if you got some extra gold or you want to RMH a little bit while you still can. Try out the Sleet Storm set. Uh, and again, really, it's uh, very similar to what you'd use for Archon. Uh, the biggest difference being you probably wouldn't use a Stormcrow for Archon, but really, um, it's a way to have that hybrid set, a way to uh, to to somewhat stunlock, probably not elite packs, but at least stunlock white mobs, even with 
your Archon gear so you don't have to have two sets. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please hit that subscribe button if you did, and I'll have another one for you soon.